I think that regenerative medicine, because that's what I'm talking about, applied to the human body, has a chance within the next few decades of becoming sufficiently comprehensive that it can actually work against something as complicated as aging. It will involve a very big divide and conquer approach, doing many different things, many different molecular and cellular repairs to the body all at the same time. There'll be, you know, of course, regenerative medicine as we understand it today, with um, stem cells and with tissue engineering and so on. And there'll also be molecular regenerative medicine, cleaning out the garbage inside cells or in the spaces between cells, things like that. It's going to be really complicated, but I think it's got a better chance. And here's the really good news. It's got a chance for people who are already in middle age or older by the time the therapies are already are, are developed. And that's why I've been able to come to the conclusion that people already alive today have a respectable chance of benefiting from these technologies. Aren't we already doing that to some degree? You have a hip replacement, you have a knee replacement, you have, we, we replace parts all the time, much, much like a car, right? Mm -hmm. So you're saying just extend that, expand it exponentially. Pretty much, and also, of course, extend it into the biological realm to a greater extent. So many of the things that we do today are what we might call non-biological solutions to medical problems. Hip replacement, you know, a bit of titanium or whatever. Stem cell therapy is, of course, a biological solution. I expect that a wider range of biological solutions to the accumulating damage of aging are going to be forthcoming. Because otherwise we become robots if we're just replacing with titanium, right? But, but what are those regenerative pills? Regenerative pills. What are we talking about? Well, first of all, not pills. Huh? Cells. So, cells. Cells. So stem cells. But we're talking about eventually giving them out in pill form, right? Isn't that what you suggested before? Not necessarily, no. I mean, stem cell therapies today, by and large, mostly, are administered using injection. You inject cells that have got the right properties into the circulation, they go to the right place, they do their thing. There's no intrinsic reason why that should change when we apply stem cell therapies as part of a wider panel of interventions. Sometimes you apply stem cells in different ways. Sometimes you want to, for example, inject them into a particular part of the brain. That's already being done to address Parkinson's disease in clinical trials. And there's a long way to go to make those clinical trials really work, but there's promising results already.